Okay, so last session, you guys had finished up all of your investigations into the dead sector as you had visited a magical school, a Bahamut Night Chapter house, as well as a Hoyton household. For each of the three places, you found no trace or remains of Gethwin Carver, the woman you were looking for, besides the corpses of her group who went into the dead sector from the Reclaimers. You had also found the relic they were hunting for and a spell book that she was using. Inside, you also found a diary along with some scrolls that give you some hints as towards what happened as well as how she escaped the fate as you found no corpse for her. The diary pretty much confirmed what you guys had been told and figured out along the way that she was working with both the Reclaimers and the Thieves Guild and she was taking on quite a few jobs and simultaneous jobs to get money very quickly as it seems she wants to leave her parents' house. You have no other leads to go on so far besides the fact that within her diary she noted she was also undergoing some clinical materia trials with Dr. Rigobard Altfeist, which one of your Pi members has heard about before. And basically, materia trials are very similar to drug trials, where they experiment with new types of materia and see how they react with people, and you basically get paid for the experimentations. You had already headed back to the Thieves Guild to hand off the documents for the quest that um, they asked you to acquire, and you were paid adequately at 1,000 gil per document, three, gil three documents in total. You decided the best bet was to go back to the Carver household, as that was the closest place on your path back to either the Reclaimers or the Inn. And we ended last session as you entered into the Carver household, as Fulwyn invited you in, allowed you to wipe your feet from the rain, and was filling your glasses with water at the desk. And as you are all gathering in the dining room once again, you may all make perception checks, aside from Alessia, since she is elsewhere currently. Alright, as Maeve enters the room, both Osa and Joseph, you will notice that she is holding a photo album clutched within her hands. She then sits beside Fulwyn at the head of the table on the other side of you as Maeve starts to speak and address your party. How come you've returned so quickly? It it's hardly been a week since we sent you out. And you can tell she's sniffing away some tears. H have you any news of our daughter? Well, we got a job couple and we followed a few leads you gave us. Um, turns out she was trying to make a bit of money. So she took on a job from the Reclaimers and headed into Sector 6. Uh, we followed her there, well, we found out where the job required her to go, so we made our way there. Um, on our arrival, what was the monster we killed again? What? Say again. What was that monster we killed at the top? The big giant thing? Ogre. ogre. Yeah, how'd you say that? There was an ogre guarding the item they was having to retrieve and we assume it was her party's corpse was there however her body was nowhere to be found so we can only assume her to be alive we found this journal and I'll, I'll pull the journal out we believe it's of hers um, and it also says that she was doing some work for some materia magic guy I can't remember the name of again Dr. Rickabod Outfice. That one.
Do you hand them the journal, or are you just, like, showing them that you have a journal? I'll hand them the journal so they can actually read it themselves. Alright, they'll take the journal from you and give it a quick skim read as they follow up what you've said. And you can see them talking amongst one another, seemingly unwilling to accept what you're saying. However, as they read through, you can definitely tell that the book's kind of confirming what you're saying. And after reading through what you can assume to be the better parts of the journal itself, they close it and Forwin will speak to you. Thank you for following the trail. It is, it is more than the police have been able to do. We now know she, has, she wasn't just kidnapped or ran away from home. And you all notice he has a bit more of a stern look on his face than his sad one earlier. But to think she had joined up with so many dangerous groups. It does not seem like our Gethwin. Why does she want to leave? We give her all she needs here. Come over here. Speaking from personal experience, no. just having what over you here. need given to you is not always what here. people want. Sometimes there's just something lacking in a mundane life such as that. I myself was uh, left left home to find adventure somewhere else. I doubt it's any consolation to you, but we, um, if we have any further information that we find along the way, we'll definitely relay it to you. The trail's not gone cold yet, Kupo. We have our next destination to adhere to. I just thought it'd be, you'd appreciate knowing what we've done so far. Yes, of course. We'll stick to our end of the poster. He then goes into the other room and pulls out a lockbox and hands it over to your party. I would just say, knowing everything we now know, um, are you still against one of us searching? Are having a look through her bedroom whilst you accompany us. We, there might be something in there what could help. And as you may know, may as you said before, we've done a better job than any detectives that have been by have. Done. She was mostly away from home. She only really came back here for food and sleep. Better to be safe than sorry, Koopa. They seem very adamant about not letting you into her room. I'd say you're not hot. I'll ask them if they're holding back any information or... Stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know how to word stuff, so stuff like that will do. <laughs> Are you lying to me, Kupo? Yeah, pretty much. They'll tell you that they aren't lying, at least to anything that you've asked, and you're, you're free to roll sense motive. You trust them. I trust them. You trust them, yeah. Seem like break parents. Sorry, I stepped away for a second. We're rolling sense mode? Yeah. Yes. Do you also trust them? I'll ask him why the nearest inn is, where we can stay due to the rain. They'll suggest you find an inn, and they'll suggest the colourful bard. 
That's what I said. I, I said uh, Wes and Harrison. Yeah, a couple of Wes and Harrison. Or the colorful bard. I don't even know what I just said. Yeah, you said the colorful bard. Okay. Um, well, it's still like a morning, right? It is currently at 10.40 a.m. Yeah. So I'll, yes, ask him, I'll ask him if they know who that doctor is and where he is based. Or do we already know that? Um, You know he's within District 3, but not um, the exact location. Um, they will tell you they didn't know about the trial she was undergoing, only that they know that Dr. Rickabod is a scientist for Sheaf. And they do know the address, so they'll give you the address for his research center. Let me just add this to the list. The research center is now on the map. It is in District 3 next to the left train station. Well, we should probably um, take off then, I suppose. There is nothing else. I mean, are you going to open the lockbox? Yeah. <laughs> Ford gave it to you like five minutes ago and you've just been holding it. Yeah, we'll check were it. we given a key? We, you only said we were given a box. No, you're just given a lockbox. I never said it was locked. Oh, I see. What's in the box? Inside the box is 3,000 gil. Okay. Excellent. So that's a thousand gillage for us through here. I'll ask him where the Nero General Star is so I can get a like a real big raincoat or an umbrella of sorts. If you're looking for a general store, you could always head towards uh Beggar's Rugsack. It's towards the east. I'll suggest the pie, that's where I want to go first. I don't fancy getting wet all the time. Fuck you up, uh, you I still don't have enough for what I want to get. Apparently you want to go for a walkie. I apologize, I tried to keep them quiet and I'm trying to, to push the taco away. Uh, we do still have one last place to visit before we're done collecting money, basically, right? Yeah, the Ricklands. Um, do we want to go there first, or do we do want to go shopping first? Because I, I, I don't have quite enough. Yeah, what we'll, I get, need. we'll get all our money first. I just, I'm literally just wanting an umbrella. I, well, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going for a big shopping spree or all of that. I just want to try to protect myself on the rent. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. Uh, Megra's rucksack is around an hour away. Hello. It's a big city. Exactly, you'd expect there'd be a corner shop everywhere. I mean, you could probably just get an umbrella from a nearby corner shop, yeah, but if you want a general store, it's a no, further I, away. I just want anywhere that would sell an umbrella. Okay, if you want an umbrella, you can get one that's like five minutes away. So I'll go to that. It sells umbrellas and ice cream. Just umbrellas. Don't you want ice cream? Nah, not the weather. There's always the weather for ice cream, even if it's snowing. Even if it's a negative 60 Fahrenheit. It's the best time. The ice cream will stay cold. And usually in the winter, ice cream is unclear, and so it's cheaper. That is true. Best time to get that Ben and Jerry's in stock. You, you can buy an umbrella for one gill. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, but uh, do you want to say anything or ask anything before you leave the Carver's household? Probably, but I can't remember. Alright. 
Anybody else? I can't think of anything. Alright, then you can leave the Carver's household after you've got your money. Let's go. Would you like to go to any of the shops first, or do you want to go straight to the reclaimers to hand in that, that relic? Oh no, you handed the you handed the relic to the um, thieves guild. Do you want to hand over the orb? Yeah, our actual quest from them. I mean, if you want to see it that way, that's up to you. Alright, so heading off to the reclaimers. Gonna take about an hour to get there. Alright. Reclaimers is three. That it is. Don't know why I'm thinking it's two. It's about the same distance anyway. You just go diagonally instead of diagonally. Alright, as you return to the Reclaimers, you see a similar sight both inside and out as you did before. However, this time you no longer stopped at the door, as you have pretty much been put into the memory of the doorkeep. And the Ronso that would normally stop you, if anyone remembers his name, good on you, but his name is Turag, with a G at the end, but you don't pronounce it the G. Um, instead of stopping you, he will tell you uh, that you're no longer allowed to go up to the leader right now, as he's currently busy with other matters. However, both he will tell you and Joseph will remember that if you have any missions outstanding or complete missions to hand in, you can go to any of the counters within this foyer. Uh, I'll say in Ronsar, uh, thank you for the information. Have a good day. Your accent's very good. Good day to you too. Off to a count where we go to hand in the quest. Alright. As you move over to one of the front desks, you'll be met by a high pillow on the other side, with a hand firmly grasped on a stamp with which he is gingerly hitting paper or envelopes with. As you approach, he will stop stamping the papers and look up to your party. Hello there, people, Pavel. How may I help you? Here to hand in the quest, Koopa. Um, do you give him the orb and the key, or just the orb? Uh, both. Alright, as you put the orb and the key on the desk, the Hypello will pull out some papers and ask for your names. My name is Remular Kapo, this is Joseph and Arsa. There might be a fourth name down there, just, uh, is, is that Osha with a O and a H? Or Osha with an A with the little squiggly bubbly on top. A with a little squiggly bubbly at the top. The Hypello will flick through several pieces of paper as he pulls out one every so often until he has four in total. And you're saying all this people pebble here is no longer in the party pool? That's right, Koopa. This is a dangerous place in Sector 6. He sadly didn't make it, Koopa. I am so sorry for your slosh. That all was not easy to obtain. He looks over the pieces of paper he has and confirms both the orb and your group, and he will then hastily stamp the papers as well as another seemingly contract-like document as he puts the orb and the key into a box, locks it along with the documents, and then he hands an envelope to uh, Remy Lies. He's the one talking to him. And alongside the envelope is a small lock box. I'll open the lock box. I'll be the envelope first. All right, uh, Joseph. As you open the lock box, inside is eighteen hundred gil. And if you read the envelope.
it will say, thank you for your contribution to the Reclaimers Guild, and then it lists your party's names. Attached to this note will be the agreed upon payment. The worker who handed this to you will note this quest was completed satisfactory and to inform me of your possible future help. Ask uh, so if there's any more quests we can take. Not currently for your group, no. Only Joseph would be able to pick them up. <laughs> well, I'm here. If there's anything that I can do. Not currently, no. Okay. Well, thank you. Come on, I'll see you later. Have a nice day. All right. I now have enough of what I need. <laughs> I have the money. And some extra. Lucky some. Say again. I'm looking for some. I should probably find a way to spend the extra money that I have because I don't want to carry around my money. It's so heavy. Alright, as you finish your... I said that, Rebbe, I looks at you and buys his eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> Money. <laughs> you may be a sweet talker, but you're not going to talk me out of my cash. As you finish your um, business at the Claims Guild, you will no longer hear the pitter patter of rain outside, but instead you can hear the chirping of birds. So, off to the chops before we visit the dock. Yeah, sure. Anyone can roll Knowledge Local to find locations of shops. That's right, getting my wand out of the way now. So that I can <laughs> let everyone... There's two wands I've had so far. Hopefully it's not an omen for today. Act, you will learn both from Osa and uh, Joseph of four distinct locations you can go to. You can buy arms and armor at Gelg's Palace, which is a smithy around two hours to the east of the inn. If you want magical items, either wondrous items, wands, or scrolls, you can go to Darkwood Dragon, which is 20 minutes to the south of the inn. If you want alchemical supplies, they can be bought from the Smoky Attic, which is 20 minutes south of the inn. And if you want general goods and services, they can be found and traded at Mavra's Rucksack, which is two hours east of the inn. And I would add those to your map. Alright, nine and eight are now on your map for those shops. I think I said something about that earlier. I was going to say, so you're skipping straight to 10. So where's well, the party you wanted to like head? To go buy some magical stuffs. Go to the magic shop first. Yeah, sure. Yeah, specifically, I want to buy magic weapons, but I'll go to the magic shop. Alright, so you are heading to the Darkwood Dragon. The connection on Discord is terrible for me right now. Same. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to red for me. It was just red for me. It's just gone back to normal. Let's see if I change the server if it'll help. I'm going to pull it back to green, but we'll see how long. No, yeah, mine's, red. A, mine's red again.
Now it's green. Uh, yeah. Green. Yeah, it was green every view leaving and coming back. Oh, I'm the issue. I see. Well, everything seems <laughs> okay. clear now. I can understand people now. I was, I was worse before. I'm better now. Yeah, I'm better now. All right. It'll take you about half an hour to get to the Darkwood Dragon and Smoky Attic area. As you walked to the southwest part of District 2, um, you will arrive in a slightly dark and a smoky part of town with more chimneys per block and shops popping up more often here and there. One prominent shop is the Darkwood Dragon that has a huge sculpture of a green dragon above its door, standing around at 20 foot tall and made of dark wood. The front of the shop is made of a emerald colored brick with a single window pane peeking into the shop to reveal a few crystal walls and staves. As you are approaching here, you'll also notice Alessia window shopping. Oh, hey there, Kubo. Hey, Alessia. Oh, hi there, Kubo. What, guy, what brings you guys around here? We have heavy pockets and not very much time. Heavy pockets? Well, I got quite light pockets if you want to transfer some to me. Oh no, I'm sure we all have plans for this hard-earned money that we've got. Hm. I see you're smart then, Kupo. Okay. What are you doing, Kupo? Oh, I'm just having a look at this staff, Kupo. I'm just about to go in and go buy it. What you doing after that, Kupo? Mm -hmm. I'm not a Tory, really. Probably got to go and see if I can find another quest. But firstly, I need to go and find another party to be with, because my last one died. <laughs> oh, so would you look at that? What a coincidence. Find <laughs> another person as well, Koopa. Oh. Well, what did you know? We just happened to be down a healer. Funny that, Koopa. And we are on a quest. So hey, that's two birds, one son for you, Koopa. Would you like to join? Well, if you don't mind me tagging along, Koopa, I'd really appreciate it. But I need to finish my shopping first. Yeah, we just have it as well, Koopa. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I'll tag along then. And, and you did kind of save our lives there. Nah, yeah, it was nothing, Koopa. You guys looked like you needed some help. So, uh, shall we go in? Yeah. Alright. As you walk inside, you are hit with a smell of elderberries and herring, alongside a dazzling display of colours coming off the differing magical wares on display. Sitting at the counter is an old-looking kobold, smoking on a long pipe and blowing smoke images in the air. Everyone's extremely fascinated with the smoke images then. <laughs> that Ooh, one looks like a cloud. <laughs> Alessi, um, Alessia will kind of just walk up and be like, Hey, can you teach me how to do that, Kupo? Looks kind of cool. Be a nice party <laughs> trick. As you approach, the kobold will tap his pipe to get rid of any excess and address you as you approach. Ah, hello there, youngins. Been some time since I've had so many strapping striplings come to the shop all at once. My name is Ferocipus. Let me know if there's anything of a tick thereafter. Well, funny you should ask, Kupo. I'm, uh, looking for a power... Wait. A power staff? What kind of element you in the market for? I'm looking at the wrong character sheet. Hang on. Carriage your sheet? What's this? <laughs> I mean my bag, Koopo. Uh, I could sell you an infinite bag. Uh, ooh. Sadly, I don't think I have enough money, Koopo. I'm quite poor. Um, But I'm just yeah, looking for I a thought... regular power staff. Preferably masterwork. Well, you, you gotta give me an element. They come in all different kinds of varieties. We got water, we got air, we got fire. What What are you wanting? What do you want to shoot? Hmm. So many choices, Koopo. 
I think I'll go fire. Fire it is. That's the common staff for most magi. Uh, you wanting a small one? Yes, please, Koopo. He then taps his pipe onto the counter as the air around you kind of vibrates slightly and something taps you on the leg as a air staff is just floating beside you. Ooh. There you go. One masterwork fire staff. Thank you, Koopo. How much do I owe you? That is three seven five gil. And Alessia will pass over. Thank you for your business, Koopo. Any of you striplings wanting to buy wares? Uh, do you have those bags that hold a lot of, lot of stuff? Well, they come in quite a few varieties, miss. Are you wanting an actual bag or a sack? A uh, bag. What, what types do you have? Well, we have a normal bag of holding, which most people refer to as a sack. It's just kind of just a spherical bag. You put things in and it can hold a lot. Or you got the handy haversack, which you normally have on your back. It's more like a backpack that's kind of infinite. Uh, the first type. The ah, sack thing. You're wanting the sack. We have four variants on offer. What are you in the market for? Uh, the first version. Ah, yes. If I'm holding version one, that'll run you 2,500 gil. Okay. Here you go. Alright, and he hands you over a bag holding one. Thank you. How about the rest of you striplings? I'm looking for a dusty rose, well, a cracked dusty rose prison, Cooper. The cracked version. Ah, yes, yes. A, a common item people ask for. You're wanting the cracked version, yes? That's right, Cooper. Hmm. Let, let me check the ledger. He then brings up a book from underneath the counter and starts flicking through the pages. I am sorry, we don't stock that here. Do you have any partner stores nearby which do, Kupa? Not within this sector, no. Not that I know of people buying this. At least at my store. They mostly sell it and I sell it off to other traders. Alright, um... Do you dwell with magical arms and armor? Or... Yes! Anything magical I deal with. How long does it take you to en do enchant stuff, I'm assuming, as well? I can enchant items, yes. How long to make this suit of armor a plus one? It'll take a day. You can come back tomorrow morning, it'll be done. That'll do me, Koopa. You have any basic magic rapiers in, in stuff? Let me have a read of the ledger. I take it it's a medium rapier you're after. Correct.
You're in luck. I have two. Well, I only need one. Um, I have um, two mundane weapons if you would like to take them and trade. Uh, if not, I've got cash. I do not trade in the mundane, sorry. If you're wanting the enchanted rapier, it will run you uh, 2320 gil. Oh, I've got that right here. Uh, is that to... Wait, you said that was to enchant mine, or... or if you... That is to buy one. Perfect, I will take one. And what about you? He then just looks at Remila. See, so yeah, I'll ask him to enchant the armor, and I'll ask if he's got any plus one bucklers anywhere. One second. I, no. I take it you're wanting a small buckler. That's right, good one. I'm afraid I'm fresh out of small enchanted oh. bucklers. What about medium set? And how much would one cost? You're wanting a medium buckler. Correct. Medium enchanted buckler. Basic. He has one of those. And how much would that cost? Uh, I'm just going to double check. One thousand two hundred. It is one one five five gil. Oh, so close! I'm I'm gonna have to go sell my old buckler and my old rapier before I can come back and buy that. But if you hold it for me, I will be back shortly to get to to buy it. We can just have someone lend you the money and then give it to them when you go to the shop. It saves you having to come back and forth. This is true. If anyone has any money to spare. How much do you need? Bear is not a number. Uh, 14 gil. Yeah, I gotta lend you 14 gil. It'll cost you a thousand gil to have your armor enchanted. Who? Not Mackie, yeah. sorry. Remy La. It'll cost you a thousand gil to have your armor enchanted and it'll be ready yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um. Could put a request in for a plus one buckler. Small. Well, you'd be waiting another day for that. I'm sure I'll be round here at some point for it. Do you have the money to pay for it? Hell yeah. Right, if you um, give him the same money, which is uh, 1155, yep. he'll have a small beckle ready for you in two days. You don't happen to have any plus uh, no, weapons like 2,000 out. You're asking for what now? Uh, no, plus one magic weapons like 2,000 more. Yeah, never mind. 
Do you have that kind of money? No, no. I mean, you've just handed over over 2,000 gil, so I'm no. not, not sure you could be having more money. Does anyone else have any other requests for the for Theorosippus? Oh, Sorry, what was that intro? I'm fresh out of cash. All right. As you all buy sell and order whatever you want from Verosipus. He will blow a smoke image of a butterfly flying off towards the exit, which follows you as you leave. But then it, it dissipates because it's just smoke. Would you like to go to the smoky attic or head to the other part of town for the other two shops? Do uh, we have? Don't we have some weapons we want to sell? I have one on me. I have at least marked a uh, short sword. I'm pretty sure nobody actually wants so. I'm just here for it just to sell it. No, I've got that holy staff medium that you guys gave me that I can't even use. Well, I can use, but it'll be inefficient for me. This is medium. Well, that you can just sell at the magic shop. So I can sell that here. I, I also have um, a masterwork longsword that sleep powder and the smelling salts we can either sell or well, I mean, I think we want to keep the the alchemical item stuff. That's fine. Um, because you know, magic happens and it's annoying. Uh, Sleep is it dangerous. Follow the magic shop. I'm gonna ask. I'll ask how much it is to identify. I oh, know. Um, you do have some scrolls that aren't identified. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. But then I uh, just realised, Alicia, could you? Can you identify scrolls? Or can you try first of all? I can give it a good go, Capo. Yeah. What was this well, spellcraft? Also, yes. just so everybody knows, I, I typically know the best places to sell, and I can sell for a little bit higher than average. Let me double check if that's high enough. Pretty sure it is. All right. Uh, what scroll is this for? A scroll from the office in the the Python household. That's why I put just above his spell project. Yep. Let me get to that so I can find what's on the scroll. All right, uh, on that scroll is Anticipate Peril. Do you want this, Elysium? It's only if I could learn it. I don't think I'm allowed to. Am I? Is it in your spells? Nope. Uh, Anticipate Peril is a time age spell. Did you sell it here then? Well, he, he, he can't learn it, but he can cast it. It's still a scroll. What does the spell do? It gives you a plus something to your initiative. It's like plus yeah, five or plus six. something to your initiative, depending on your level. 
That was it. They it's basically just, is there until until. Yeah. It's time. for a minute. You have to use it before the fight. Yeah. That's why it's anticipated. So if you know a fight's about to happen, you activate it before the fight. Ah, I see. So you know, if somebody's sneaking up on a ogre and is about to get their head knocked clean off, I think it's a touch. Yeah, it's a touch spell. So you can't like yeah, sneak off person, that. Ah! The, the person sneaking up isn't the one that's going to need. <laughs> well, <laughs> true. And Atlas so could have learned this because it's also an astrologian spell. Uh, I think Atlas already had the spell. I can well, it doesn't mean you can't learn it again. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure Atlas already had that spell. Yeah, he did. Uh, do you have any other scrolls or unidentified items? No, I believe that's it. I swear you had, like, three. I swear he had more as well. Are you sure you didn't give it to Atlas? Did you even? Did you guys even loot Atlas's body? Yeah, they did. Are you sure Atlas didn't have it? Mm, well, there's nothing in Atlas's backpack, so I assume not then. Down to 41 view of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you're not heading to the smoky attic. You want to go to the other district, well, the other side of the district. I still have the weapon still, so. You still have the what now? The weapons. Some weapons. Just mundane weapons. I mean you can't you can't sell the master longsword here, you have to go to Gail's yeah. Palace. That that's what So what was, are you guys doing? Are you gonna going sell to the peril and anticipate peril scroll or are you gonna keep it for me to cast at some point? Is it a one time use scroll? Is yes, scrolls, scrolls are only one time use. I mean, it could be good if you know something big's going to come along. And you want that plus one to initiative. Yeah. Always helps. Up to you guys, it's not my scroll. At least now, Koopa, you're the one who's going to use it more than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up to you, Koopa. I don't mind if you sell it, I don't mind if I use it. Typicoid. Nah, you can have it, Koopa. Alright. I'll save it for when we need it. And then you never use it like a normal Final Fantasy game. Probably. You end the game with eight elixirs that are never used. That always happens. So you were heading off to the eastern part for the other two shops? Well, when we're here, has everybody got at least two healing potions? No, Koopo. You can, you're healing one, don't you? Oh, I do, Koopo. Yeah, you're fine then. Yeah, let's go. Alright, it'll take you an hour to get to that side of town. Uh, which one are you going to first? I assume the weapon shop. Yeah. Alright, walk into the east for about an hour from the other two shops. 
you'll arrive at a somewhat busy part of the district, with some merchants peddling wares on the streets or people going in and out of local business shops. Gelg's Palace can easily be seen, with its pseudo battlements on the roof, massive stone sword attached to the top of the door, and window panes that show the inside, full of armor mannequins. The door to shop is wide open for customers to go through, allowing you easy access. Do you go inside? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> As you take a couple steps inside, you'll be hit with the smell of iron, polish, and cooking and metal. Lining the walls, as well as display cases, are several sets of armor, gauntlets, helmets, shields, and weapons of varying designs and sizes. It seems the speciality is iron and cold iron, with a few silver weapons scattered around. At the till is a muscular-looking female aura of the Rain clan who will greet you heartily as she notices you enter the building. Greetings, neighbors. What can Gelg do for you today? Looking to put in a custom order? Come to sell wares? Or do you like the look of something around here? She then gives you a very obvious wink. And I'm not talking about myself. You don't have to have a plus one butler, do you? Wait, never mind. I'm stupid. Ignore me, Papa. Ignoring you is part of my specialty. Ouch. You have a master work chart, Sard. Small. That I do. I'll take it, Papa. And I'll also sell you my other shots that I have on me. I don't even know if the 55% give you any more it is, money. Yeah, time. it's going to make no difference. Yeah, not in these prices when we're just selling one day. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get any extra money for having Joseph sell yeah. that sword. You get uh, five yeah. gil for selling yours. <laughs> 305 also, Kevin. He He's buying a master, like he's selling a normal one. So you actually have one of those, so you can buy, well, you can swap and hand over more money. Can they make weapons? Like, can they change your weapon into a masterwork one? No, that's through magic. I think the spell is just called Masterwork Weapon, and it's not in FFD20. Alright, I'll ask if he's got any Masterwork cards hanging around. Masterwork cards? Well, according to V, my cards are a type of weapon, so I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking if that's what you said. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like, sound like car instead of cards. No, no, cards. <laughs> okay. Card. Yes, they will have a Masterwork set of cards. Yeah, I'll take one of them as well. I uh, don't know what your cost of your cards is, though. Then it's not rained down anywhere, so I don't know. Then just straight up 300 gil. 300? So 605 gil altogether. Do you have a masterwork right axe? What size? Medium. Yes. I'm a. Uh... Trade that in with a regular great axe and a short sword. You get sixteen for selling those two, and it's three twenty for buying the new one. Three up four. 
any other trading, selling, and whatnot of weapons. Joseph wants to sell his masterwork longsword. Which I think is a bit more money. Double check. It is a bit more money. Yes, you get one seven free gill for that. Which you can now give money back to whoever lent you the money for the magic item. Seven each to who? So you're giving that money to everyone besides Alessia. It seems fair she wasn't there to help you get the item. <laughs> I was just double checking because making sure math is correct and money just doesn't go disappearing. Oh, yeah, shit, balls. Did your money disappear? <laughs> Alicia, what are these for? <laughs> 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 oh, we only have the one undefentified scroll. It has all these other items. Uh, I've got them in my other item area, not in my equipment list. That is like, God damn it. Well, let's have a look, Kabo. Do I need to do four separate rolls, or is it just one roll for each? Uh, it'd be four separate rolls. Uh, that's from the Spellbook of Bahamas Knight, which is the first floor. Okay, um... This is gonna get real confusing. Uh... You learn two of them. Uh, one is for Cure, and the other is for Magic Weapon. Both are cast level one. We can just say you reverse time and you can ask uh, Ferocipus to identify the others if you want. Please do. It'll be 10 gil per scroll. That's fine. I'll pay it. Alright. The other two are... Uh, Bless Weapon and Restore. Those are also cast level 1. Hey you go, Alessia. More scrolls for you. Uh, thanks, Koopo. <laughs> You're the only spellcaster, so. <laughs> Doubtful if you can learn all these, though. I can't learn anything that's not summoner. Yeah, some spells are also summoner spells, though. You just get full round versions of them. You don't. You definitely can't do cure. You definitely can't do restore. Actually, I don't think you can do either any of those. Well, I don't do any of those. So they're either one use or sell them. Just remember you have them. 
I'm gonna like some I'm gonna, people. Uh, I'm gonna sell the uh, cure because I've got a cure one, so there's no point. So I'll sell the cure one. All right. If you sell the cure, it you uh, it is actually. Let's see if that gets you any more money from having Joseph. Uh, not really. Nah. You get 13 gil from selling the cure scroll. Well, thanks, good pal. I love it because Alessia is holding it. No, no, not Alessia. Um, Fenrir is holding everything. All my money. Everything. So what you're saying is if I eat your avatar, you lose all your stuff. Uh, Correct. Actually, it's wrong. When he dies, he goes back to his own plane. Also correct. I can never lose my items. Also yeah. wrong. Yeah, also wrong. True. There uh, is the yes, steel combat wrong. maneuver for, for that that just thing I need to do. Just yeah. take your items off you and then run. He has 259. This is light carry load, though, so I think I'm doing alright. He'd be able to carry anything for me. Any more business with the arms and armor shop? I'm good, Koopa. Alright, nobody's speaking up, so nobody has anything else to do. Once your business is concluded, Gelg will wave the party off and tell you that she hopes you'll come back soon. Gonna go to the general star now and see if we've got any of this. Uh, just opposite Gelg's palace is a shop with another large design atop the door. This one is of a stone backpack with a Moogle pom-pom poking out from the bag itself. The door has several people going in and out, mostly Moogles, who are seemingly pleased with their new messenger bags. The front of the shop has window panes that show the inside being full of miscellaneous gear, from bags and rope to good boots and flavoured rations. And you can easily hear the sounds of Kupo from within. Kupo? You're, you're asking if there's a wondrous item in the general store. Sunny soap. You never know. They do a not magical. have magical soap. That's how it. <laughs> Probably in the magic shop. Yes. You don't it think would so. be. Well, I'm going there tomorrow, I'll get it then. <laughs> if you do enter the rucksack asking for that, uh, you will be hit with the smell of leather, new bag smell, and fur. And at the counter, we'll show a Moogle sat on a raised chair of a stripy blue and white coloured fur. Their pom-pom will jump slightly as they see you approach, though they're kind of disappointed you asked for a magical item. Howdy do, Koopo! Welcome to Beggar's Rucksack, the home for any Moogle on the go! Or an adventuring heaven for the other than post person inclined Koopo. Oh, I also Anyone like the, the first line of description that I wrote was we'll buy and sell any gear that's not magical. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anybody have any masterwork tools? If not, come and get some here. Yeah, you can buy masterwork tools here. I'm maybe looking at Joseph for this one because I'm pretty sure you'll need them. Yeah. If you yeah, can't afford it, I'll buy them. That's fine. Um. Has everyone got rations? I do, Koopa. Got some, but could probably stack up. You just remind me of a question okay. I was going to ask Aiden a long time ago. Because he's oh, an boy, avatar. I love questions. Because he's an avatar, does he still need to be fed? It should stay on the description. Oh, Christ. Okay, hang on. Because I couldn't find anywhere where it said that he needed to be fed. I'll assume yes, because they are a living creature. Mm. Though they do count as outsider, and some outsiders don't. 
It'll all depend on what it says in the class and the avatar section. If not, there's always Veal to ask. And if you do want to buy rations, it's one gil per day's worth. I'm going to have to ask Veal because I haven't got a clue. Uh, by like 10. I can just stash them in my fancy new bag. And since the bag has no sort of atmosphere, it doesn't decay as fast. Yeah, and like it's, it's trail ration, so it's like dry food anyway. Yeah, they're like so power bars. It's forever food. Hmm. I'm assuming they won't have any alchemical items here then. No. The, the only thing magical they have is bags of holding, just because they're bags. Alright, that's me done here then, Kabob. You done? You haven't bought anything. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I just came in to smell the new bag smell. It's like new book smell, but bags. I was like Chloe today. She went into the carpet store and smelled all the carpets. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you two are old. <laughs> Cap shopping. Damn. Ooh. So are we moving on? Uh, yeah, if nobody else is buying anything else, then yes. So. Yeah, if nobody else is buying anything else, then. I like how you only came here for Osa to buy food. It's more so she, she bought food because we all came here, so she said, might as well, since we're here. So as we're walking up anywhere we're going, I'm gonna go up to us, uh, back my eyelids and say, could you help carry my money coupon? <laughs> could you hold on uh, to my money? Sure. Just take it and run. <laughs> Just give me the weight of it. 17 right now. Okay. Thank you, Copper. So we're we heading to the research center. I mean, I guess so. If we got nothing else to do. Let's go, Kapong. <laughs> Alright. Um, are you taking the trains or are you just walking there? Train. Train. I mean, we got the whole day pass, so. Yeah, for the district well, travel. Might, might as well take the train. <laughs> It will take you about 10 minutes to get there via train. Alright, as you get to the train station and head off into District 3, the train will loop around until it reaches the northern part of District 2 and then head through into the wall and outside the other end into District 3. 
and as you come into District 3, you're reminded just by looking around at the people and the places that is definitely a high class location as all the residents have much finer and cleaner clothing and the buildings are generally a lot taller and well kept. As you reach the district itself, you're able to get off the train and while it's not as busy as the others, it definitely has its fair use from the inhabitants here. And as you are taking the train itself, um, several messages will play on the TV screens, as which you can watch as they are, as you are taking the train itself. And thankfully, a lot of the TV and news is relatively quick since trains don't take too long and most of the news stories are condensed. The first one that plays is very... It's very flashy as people are taking pictures and whatnot as there seems to be an interview going on. As the interviewer starts with, Today, we'll be talking to Ginmok Tuller of the Reclaimers Guild a group dedicated to taking back what was lost in the war over 300 years ago. You'll be bringing in an old-style magical artifact to show us. More at 12. It then cycles through several other news and advertisements. However, the interview itself doesn't really show up on the news until you actually get off, at which point it's still not, not even showing, so it's probably waiting. And since they're saying at 12, it's probably a rerun of the news from earlier. If you want a transcript of the show itself, there's the... what it shows. Phil answered, my avatar doesn't need feeding. Does it need watering? No. <laughs> you need no, to give feed it and water your pets. I'll no, give it a bath. Alright, and as you get out of the train station, plenty of citizens will be walking about the streets dressed in finer clothing, and you'll also notice the streets themselves are rather clean in comparison to the other districts, especially District 1. And you'll also notice there are more electrical devices seen around, both on the sides of buildings or in the hands of passing by researchers. Some of the bigger buildings also have television screens attached to their walls displaying local news with flashing images taken from sheaf from either the outside of the buildings or inside, almost as if they're advertising for people to buy their products or to come work for them. You also see several new screens of material and weapons on show as the researchers are experimenting with both of both material and weapon together and apart. And instead of dark colours that you would have seen in the earlier districts, District 3 takes on a much brighter aesthetic. The buildings are a mix of blue, cream and light brown stone with coloured doors that have glass panes. The floor that you walk across is also of a smooth grey stone. And every so often, you'll notice some people of lower living meeting with friends or going to local businesses, to which you're allowed perception checks. In we go. That's it. Get, get the bad rolls out now. Yep. Damn, I've been terrible so far today. Okay, everyone besides Alessia will miss this. Uh, Alessia, you will also notice that the higher class citizens are looking a bit too long at the lower class who pass by, but no words or actions are taken. And as you are looking about the area as you're, as you're moving, you will 
make a kind of mental note that for every 50 citizens, you'll also notice at least one police officer or chief guard either guarding a building or out of patrol. And just for clarity, the train station itself also employed four chief guards around the platforms. And since you have the location, you can head directly to the building if you wish. Let's yeah, go. Let's go. Heading in the direction of the center, the you will notice more guards popping up than usual, either on patrols or guard on the streets. One place of note is a guarded metal door that has a sign above it reading Mana Mine, Personnel Only, with two chief security guarding the doors, geared up more than the local police. This part of the district also turns more metallic and clean, with buildings moving over to more white designs alongside clinics and drugstores. Possibly all these businesses and centres are built here due to the local mana mine. After a while of walking through this part, you will also you will then arrive at a rather large complex, five stories tall with large window panes looking into the several offices and rooms within. In giant letters above the door, there is the name of the building. It is simply Chief Research Center. There are a few signs on the sides stating which entrances to use to which departments, from staff entrances and informational areas to trials and emergency exits. Is there a reception desk? On the outside of this building, no. How about on the inside? It could be, depending on what door you go through. What are the three entrances again? Trial there period. Are, there, there are several different ones. You can go through the trial's entrance, yes. That'd be the one. Alright, you're, you're easily able to find the correct entrance to go through, which is neatly labelled trials. And going through the door, you will enter into a sterile white room with white marble panel floors and white painted walls. There are grey tables and chairs within a... as as well as a blue counter right in front of the door. Go up to the counter. Moving up to the counter, you will notice a Guado manning the desk. There is a nameplate on the desk that reads Senin Row, which I shall put the chat for you. And as you approach, he will speak in a soft and a melodious voice. Hello and good day. How may I assist you? Are you here for a trial or have an appointment? Uh, we're here to see Dr. Rickabond, is it? Rickabod. Yeah, Rickabod. Uh, as you ask to see Dr. Rickerbot, the Guado will reply stating that the doctor is fully booked. However, you may roll Diplomacy or Intimidate to get more out of him. Yeah, uh, Diplomacy. See? The good rolls come back where it counts. Are you making any mention of why you want to see him? Uh, yeah, I'll just say we're looking. Well, I'll show him the wanted, well, the missing girl person thing, and just say that we have reason to believe that she was doing work for him, and we just want to know when the last time he saw her and stuff like that. Since you are investigating Gethwin's disappearance, I can make an exception for you. We can have a meeting prepared within an hour or so. That'd be wonderful, Kubo. Thank you. Tilt the top. Um, no, really. Uh, yeah, I'll just say when was the last time he saw Gethwin, if she's come through here. Uh, 
And does he know of any of the work you were doing? Uh, since this is a medical facility, you could you, you could normally ask if they have records rather than do you know her? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. hundreds of people come through here, he's not going to know everyone. You have records of her. Uh, roll me diplomacy or intimidate. <laughs> Well, normally we cannot release records about a patient. However, since you are looking for a disappeared person, we can make an exception. <coughs> the Guado will then flick through several folders and pick out one for Gefwin. He doesn't show you it, but he does read it to you. Gefwin has undergone one trial, which, which she was compensated for and left afterwards. And uh, this was... Uh, he will also tell you that this is... The date for when she went to the trial was three days after she went into Sector 6 on the 7th of February. And what day are we on now? I should have put that in the timer. Give me one sec to go get the date for you. I just need to make this a bit taller so we have all of these time things here. Alright. Um, she went missing on the 2nd of February and your investigation started on the 16th. You are currently on day 5 of your investigation so it is uh, the 21st. So these are the last people that we know of that, that saw her. As far as you know, yes. I'm assuming this area where we can sit down and wait for a bit. Yeah. I did say there was chairs. Right, I'll go sit down and sit down. I want to get my cards. Whilst we wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Be careful of the corners, you'll be fine. I've seen how dexterous you are with those cards. I bet you could pull some tricks. Hey, hey, no tricks, come on. I take you have no more questions for the quarter then. No. Oh, come on. Come on slow. Uh, I have something I need to do. Because I don't, I don't trust that. Trust what? Oh, wait, did I do a thing? I did. Sorry, what are you saying? Yeah, I was just sensing motive on our Google friend that has cards in his hands. You can't do social checks against Pi members. Oh. Alright, 
you guys take a seat, either playing cards or just talking for an hour. And as an hour passes, a bell will toll with an announcement calling for your party to go to Dr. Rickabod's office. I ask the Guada where it is. There are signs that she'll direct you, but you'll head down that corridor. He then points off to his left, which will be your right. Away we go. Thank you, Kippa. <coughs> you follow the signs, which are clearly displayed, to allow you to find Dr. Rickabod's office. Uh, and outside the office are two chief security on guards. And as you approach, they will ask you to hand over any weapons and spell components before heading into the office. Oh. Why? Yeah. I mean, are you are you asking why? Yes. Uh, it is just procedure, and the doctor will not meet anyone who is armed. Is my dog? <laughs> is my wolf allowed in, Cooper? No pets allowed. No. I'm sorry, Fenrir. I'll let you know everything that happens. I'll tell the if we talk to you. <laughs> he's not a pet. He's a family member. He is, Kupo. I mean, he's, it, it's, he, he's also a magical <laughs> being that has an avatar of a god, so... It's, it's, it's my ESA. How dare you? <laughs> Can I just be like, it's my guide I'm dog. I'm blind. I need help. God. Or you just be like, this is an intelligent creature. He makes his own decisions. He's Can I just sleight of hand my you? dog? Can I just like <laughs> put him in my coat pocket? No. The dog's bigger than you are by like three times. <laughs> I'll just give Fenrir to guard all of my items. I'll give him my weapons. I'll hand over, well, yeah, I'll hand over my short sword, but I'm hiding the cards. I will reluctantly unbuckle my rapier and hand it over. <sighs> hey, what if we go back to the weapon shops and whatnot? We should, I should try to find a dagger. I need a dagger. We're gonna go back there after. Yeah. I was muted. I don't even know how long I was muted for. Um, Ermila, as you hide away your cards, you're pretty sure they've not noticed that they, as they have not asked you to give them over. Cool. And you're lucky, so I rolled really low. Alright, after relinquishing your gear or hiding them with sleight of hand, um, you'll be able to enter into the doctor's office. Though Fenrir is staring outside. Um, the office is rather long at 60 foot in length and 30 foot width. There are several tables with beakers, vials and tubes full of liquids. Bookshelves and containers line the walls full of books and other alchemical or magical instruments. At the far end is another large desk with glowing crystals and vials with a glowing fluorescent blue-white liquid. In front of this desk is a rather old Aegil, probably in his late 30s. As he hears your group approach, he will turn around, minding his wings on the desk, and pulling down a dusk mask, to which he will then address you, your group in a slightly annoyed and gravelly voice. So... You're the ones who wanted a medium on such short notice. Well, spit it out. My lifespan isn't gonna wait around forever. We're investigating the disappearance of Gethwin, Cooper. We are sorry to disturb you during your working. Uh, if anyone wants to, they can also roll a knowledge local to figure out how long eagles will normally live. And then we're gonna roll it. The DC's run. 
I think everyone just automatically bypasses this. <laughs> Alright, uh, everyone will know that Aegils normally live to around 40. So if you think this guy's around 30, he really does not have much long to live. What do you want to know about Gethwin? I already told the police everything. Well, I'm, as far as we can tell, you were the last one to see her before she disappeared. Do you happen to know where she was going after she left your office? Romy Diplomacy. Well, when Gethryn finished her trial here, I told her a house she could that could contain some expensive materials since she was asking about other ways to make money. I have more trials, but she wanted something quicker. Uh, the house itself has belonged to her previous trial patients who reacted harshly to the trials, and they failed to bring back the experimental materia. I told her she could keep it if she found it. Where would that be, Kupa? He gives you the location. It's in District 1. Have you seen or heard from her since she was here for her last appointment? One sec, I'm just updating the map. The patient records are confidential, but if you pass a diplomacy check, I might let you see them. <laughs> You're not allowed to see them. What about me, Kupo? You didn't ask. Right. Joseph right. did. Can I step in after Joseph asked them then? No. I mean, I you, you can ask something else. I wasn't necessarily asking about her patient records. I was just asking if you personally had seen or heard from her since. Well, that's how he responded to your question. Ah, that's for patient records then. No, I can't give them. Like I told your friend, I'm not giving you them. Ask what the failed experiment was about. Intimidate him. None of us are really good at that. Uh, uh, what was a failed experiment plan. about, Kupal? I don't know. One second. Or a minute, rather. As apparently fireworks go off in uh, Entro's house. <laughs> and then Entro starts crying. <laughs> Uh, you can make a diplomacy check. Yeah. Don't cry just because you failed a check enter, it's fine. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yeah, you did. Oh god. How about now? Better. Well, we heard you say how about now, but nothing else. Yeah, I'll go switch over to push to I am currently working on a materia that anyone can use, regardless of their magical talents. I am also working on materia that will help races live longer lives. What about that failed one, Kupa? Where she went off to? What I just told you. Is, one, is both of them? Yes. What race was the patient, Kupa? Hume.
Well, thank you for the help, Kuba. So the questions you're leaving? Uh, like, well, I'm not. I don't want to ask this because I know my diplomacy. But you could ask that. Uh, has he done the same experiment to multiple patients, subjects? Like, what, what do you call them? Trial members. Uh, trial like patients. That. Trial patients. He'll tell I you have... that he, he he'll tell you that he gives the same trials to several people. Is he just their, this one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, has there been other failures? He he only mentions this one failure. Was he the only Hume in this test? Oh no, there's several. There's several Humes and other races. You got any material we can try? Well, I could try a couple. We get around yeah, a lot. You're not, you're not a patient. What kind of risks are they, Cooper? The same kind of risks you'll find with other ex experiments and trials. Fever, rash, cold symptoms, headaches, maybe bleeding. Any mutations, Cooper? If there are mutations, it'd be on the news. I'm pretty sure um, research facility like this could keep something like that under wraps, Cooper. We just want to know what we're going, getting ourselves into. Especially if she hasn't returned from that job yet, Coupon. It wasn't really a job. She just wanted a tip. So you've had no cases of mutation, Coupon? No. Um, throughout his discussion, he does seem as if he's trying to rush the conversation along, and he wants you to get out of his hair, and you're not too sure if it's because he wants to get back to his work, or he doesn't want to say something else. However, it does seem like he's holding information. Come on, Kupo, we're just trying to help. Anything we discuss here is going to stay in this room, Kupo. Reroll. <laughs> God damn! Terrible. You can help by leaving. One grumpy old man. All right. Let's go, Kupa. As you start to leave, you'll notice he definitely shows some elation at the fact he's able to return to his work, and he kind of like shoes you off with his hands. Well, aren't you just rude, Koopa? <laughs> well, he's dying. I think anyone would be rude when they're dying. Unless they can't speak. Uh, as you leave the room, you'll be able to collect your gear back from the sheath security. Do you leave the building? Yeah. Do you go to the house straight away, or did you want to do the shopping on the way, or...? <clears throat> I'm okay doing either. Uh, it's probably faster just to go straight to the house, because we're pretty much right at a train station, and... Yeah, I can wait for myself. It's not a problem. Might as well get a train station all the way down then. All right. As the as your group will leave the building, you will notice a tall and well-built Hume talking to some of the locals. The man who wears a brown hat will notice your group exiting the building, and you will see that he thanks the people he was talking to, and he starts to have a bit of a jog to his step 
as he hastens over to your party. In a straight, calm, if a bit happy voice, the man will address you. Well, hello there. Sorry to drop in on you like this, but do you mind a little chat? And you can see he's scribbling down on a notepad with a pencil. Do you mind if we go away from here? I, I know a good coffee shop down the road. We're rather busy. Or rather, what do you want to talk about, Kupo? I'll see if it's worth my time. I'm currently writing a... Well... Let's just say it's, it's a report on what's going on around here with all the material and missing people. Missing people, Kupo? Been a few cases, then? Well, that's, that's what I want to go talk about. If you've got five minutes to spare. You got my, you got my attention, Koopa. Well, we might be able to get some information out of him, Koopa. Let's go. When's the next train due to leave? <laughs> One arrives every 15 minutes. Oh, okay, we're fine then. Like, they're, they're really fast trains, and they're very on schedule. Alright. The party right. mo mostly agreed to go with the man. I hope you're buying my drink, Kupo. He is. Um, the man will take you about five minutes down the road to a quaint little coffee shop called Observation Roast. There we are. Uh, where an elderly Hume will be serving drinks to the customers. The man will pay for drinks for each party member, and you can get an assortment of hot drinks or cold drinks, so they do not serve alcohol. Not my kind of place. <laughs> Do they have um, hot chocolate? Yes, they'll have hot chocolate. Oh, yeah. The old man will take all of your orders and return shortly with your hot or cold beverages, as the man who asked you here just has a rather large, big, a rather large mug of coffee himself. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. My name is Biggs. I am a private investigator currently looking into several missing person cases. And he then sips his coffee. Oof, good stuff. Anyways, I've heard and seen a bit of your of you guys around. I, I noticed you at the Carver's house and the Reclaimers, so I was wondering if you're an upper band looking for this missing Carver girl. That's right, Koopa. Ha have you happened to find the woman yet? Nope, not yet. You, you, you got any leads? Yep. The, what, can, you, can you explain the leads? Nope, it's an active investigation that we're getting paid for. Well, I, I saw you coming out of uh, Dr. Rickabot's building. Did you have something to follow up there? He just looks at the party, you're all just drinking. Yes, Koopa. How many people are missing? Oh, well, there's no particular number on them, but there's quite a few over the, uh, let's say, one or two years. Have you found any pattern yet, Koopa? No patterns as such. They come over from all the different sectors, except set six, of course. So, what made you start looking into it, Cooper? Something must have caught your eye. Well, as I said, it was going on for so long, and there's just more missing persons than normal. And as a private investigator, people were coming to me with uh, contracts and jobs to find the missing people. Well, Kupo, it seems like we're both in the same profession, so we don't really want to give you the information if you're just going to go ahead and find it and take the lead. I mean, we're trying to get a pay as well. Well, I'm working for different people. If you're working for the Carvers, I'm working for other families. 
I'll send Smotive to see if he's actually telling the truth. Yeah, you can set Smotive. But you can always I set Smotive. Really cannot point. do that. <laughs> you trust him. I'm sure I do. Oh, so also trust him. Ram and Laura also trust him. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, but... Yep. Well, uh, Cabal, if you have any if you have any information, I'm sure we can share some information. You mentioned materia. What what does that have to do with the cases? Oh, well, there's just been a few correlations between materia trial patients and people disappearing. Some of them have gone to the trials a good amount to think, make me think there's a coincidence. Have they all been trial patients? No, not all, but some slip through the cracks and it, people go missing every day. It's not something new. Well, our lead's taken us to a failed one, Koopa, who never returned the material. Oh, are you talking about... He then gives you the address you were given. That's right, Koopa. Ah, oh, yes. I followed up on that lead. Uh, apparently they disappeared a few weeks back. Uh, though, due to their low standing, they had no real news about it. Because, well, District 1. Not many people care about the poor districts. So, did you get anything from that lead, Koopa? Well... I searched the outside of the house, but I didn't want to really intrude. It's not really my style of thing. But as far as I can tell, nobody's left or entered that house ever since the people went missing. Well, the only thing we can do is look inside, Koopa. But it sounds like you know as much as we do. So, uh... You, you guys seem to be more in this for the money rather than the fame. I'm actually writing up a story for all of these disappearances and tr trying to get a name out there for the PI business to pick up. If I come across any information or items that will come help you, you think you'll let me get the the uh, credit for the mission? Sounds good to me, Kabal. As long as I'm saying um, 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 I don't have many um nominas, but I do have some baba bars. Um, 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 as long as I say anonymous, Kupo, it's fine by me. Oh, of course. That's fine. Does everyone else agree, or are they just letting Remy last speak for him? No, I don't care. Checking them out. Yep, jo Joseph slides is up the target. He's about six foot. Uh, his class is profession, and his level is one. Uh, he doesn't have really any ability modifiers you'd care about. Okay. I'm more I'm more worried about the perception bluff, sleight of hand, steal, attack, and damage. I mean, if you already want to kill him in broad daylight, go ahead. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm more, more the first part, but like, I was just reading it off. And as you all mostly accept his request to give him the credit for the whole investigation, uh, he will hand over a small stone to your side of the table. What's this, Koopa? Uh, that's that's a, uh, a one-time use dispel ball. You can use that to, well, spell magic. You can hit a, hit a target or a magical item and it will spell it, or, or at least try to. If, if you're dealing with materia-based things, you, you might come in handy. Well, thank you, Koopa. Now, pick it up and park it. How do you use it? You basically throw it at a target and when it hits, you roll a dispel check. Yep, yeah, Remy, that's something that's right up your alley, throwing things. What was your name again? B. 
Olympics. What? That is about two o'clock now. Damn. So. Did we rest from coming in from sector six to sector one? Yeah, we did. We, we got back like early in the morning. It's still the same day. Yeah. But we didn't do anything during that time. We just. Just we first went to the Thieves Guild, and the Carvers, and the Reclaimers, then shopping, and now we're here. It's been a long day. It's eventful, going around the city. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, if we do it, get any leads or anything, oh, well, where should we meet you? Yeah, what uh, reporting agency do you work for? Oh, yeah, yes, of course. We definitely need to stay in contact. He then puts his hand into his shirt and pulls out a business card, which he'll hand over to Remila. And on the business card has the number to his building. Anybody have a phone? No, phones are not mobile. You gotta find a actual phone box to phone him. Okay. Right. Thank you, Kappa. Hopefully see you soon with some good news. How much does it cost to make a phone call? Uh, I shall get you that price after I go back to look for it in my notes. Um, Even however... It was super expensive for a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> As the discussion comes to a close, a Moogle will fly it towards the group and hand a letter to Biggs. To which Biggs will look at the sender and you see like, he kind of like hops in shock. Ah, well, I've, I've got another lead to follow, another case. Just just ring that number if you got any new information or if you think I've got information to hand over to you. Good luck out there, Koopa. I'm gonna do it. You gonna do what? Kill him? No, no, no. I'm gonna watch where he puts this little letter or whatever that he gets. If he puts it away in his pocket or something like that, I'm gonna try to steal it from him. If he doesn't put it away, I'm not gonna try to. He's holding it in his hands. Well, yeah, but like as he like walks away, as he like... Um, no, he, he, he continues to hold it in his hands when he leaves. Okay, uh, can I see any writing on it? If you're on perception. Apparently Rembelow also wants to look. And to make a phone call, it's one gill per 15 minutes. Gee, many Christmas, that's still super expensive. It's a new technology. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're paying for the experience of a lifetime, talking to someone who's not there. Alright, um... You're both able to see that it's just addressed to Biggs. And it doesn't really have an address since most post Moogles and Babetians can just find the persons who it's meant to be delivered to. Um, and it has the name of a, another person who you do not recognize. Uh, can I do a knowledge check to see if I know knowledge local? Or anything it, like that to see if I. It's, or is it just insignificant to us? Yeah, it's pretty inconsequential to what you guys are doing. Okay.
Okay. I still kind of want to have <laughs> an idea of what's going on in that letter. What surprised him so, but I guess if he's not going to put it away while, or if, yeah, if he's not going to like put it in his pocket while we're standing there, I guess we'll just walk away. At least I will. Yep, away we go. Are you heading straight to the failed trial house, or are you heading off somewhere else first? I think we're well, heading straight to the house. Yeah. I wouldn't mind resting and getting my uh, equipment the following day before we go there, because if she went there and hasn't returned from there, we don't well, know what wait. is there. Didn't you just say that you don't mind waiting for that stuff? For the soap and all that rubbish, sure, but for my armor, not really. You don't need armor. Uh, well, you said there were no mutations. I didn't <laughs> trust him completely, Kuba. And like I said, she didn't return from there. Well, we don't well, really know that. We know. <laughs> he didn't return here we have to go, from there. We have to go investigate. Yeah, he... He, she was, she also didn't return from Sector 6 until you found she went somewhere else. Yeah, if I die, Kupo, she... I'm coming back to haunt all of you. <laughs> Just stay at the back, no, it'll be can't. fine. That's fine, Kupo. I think you guys are already being haunted. I mean, I don't mind waiting if you want your stuff first. But either way, if the place has been empty this far, then I don't know. So, we're sleeping for the day, or we're going straight there? I want to sleep. Don't know about the rest of you. I don't mind, Kupo. But if it's a missing person you're looking for, surely you want to find them as quickly as possible to reduce the danger. I mean, yeah. But if it's dangerous, then... I want to be protected, Kupo. <laughs> That wasn't necessarily meaning danger for you. Decisions, decisions. Oh, I'll make you out the colourful bad. I'm off to rest. <laughs> no one's saying that. So I'm not just gonna... Okay, so you're gonna rest for the rest of the day then. Colourful bad. Have a nice meal. Have a drink. Rest away. Ew, you're gonna pay for two train tickets. How about some fancy food when we're there? Normally, when you pay for a room, you get a meal with it anyway. But yeah. if you want even better meals, you can pay more money. Better meals. It's the same on the menu uh, there. And is there anywhere to get my clothes like? Dry clean. I'm pretty sure you could. Actually, no, I don't even know. Press. I can't remember press agitations in this. <laughs> Let's have a look. See. No. Yeah. There could be a place near the end that dry clean your clothes for you. Two yeah. gil. Yep. Yeah. So five gil for that. Five. Um, three for the food, and two for the cleaning. Thank you. Done. Does anyone want to do anything else for the rest of the day, or just rest it up? Rest it up. I mean, if Joseph wanted the dagger, now would be the time to go get it. Yeah, Joseph wanted the dagger? Stop by uh, just a regular old weapon shop or whatever and just grab a, a dagger. Just, just a regular old dagger? Yeah. Okay, I don't know why a, a knife, a, a knife, a thief wouldn't already have a dagger, but sure, you can get a dagger for do kill. Alright, if anyone doesn't have anything else to do, we can sleep through until the next day.
to day six. And before we start this day, we shall have our break. Cool. I'll see you later. See you if you're happy. happy.
Are we missing intro or did he even leave? He's here. And Jack never used the BRB screen. Oh, I forgot about it. I am Wait. disappointed into you. Wait, do I even have one? I do. Nope, wrong one. Okay, apparently Let's I do don't. Like... You used to have one. Hmm. But Maybe I don't. We're, we're, we're fine now. <laughs> yeah, strange. Alright, so you all sleep and rest through the day and night, and you'll cover your level in health. And if you're a caster, your level plus your caster mod and MP, any daily things is restored. Where would you like to go from the colourful bard? The magic star. Why are you going there? Have a go over there. No, no. Take you about 20 minutes to get there from the couple bard. And you'll be able to pick up your plus one armor, Remy. Did you want to buy anything else while you're at the magic store? If you want to buy magic items that are magical? I'll pick up the soap here. Oh, I don't know if she'll have the soap. They will have the soap, which will cost 200 gil. That is some heavy soap at two pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had like bits of dirt that like rocks in it. That's salt in it. That like everything in it. Everything that is and isn't soap. Has well fat in there. Let's do anything else or do you want to go straight to the failed trial house? I'm done here. Same. Are you guys walking or are you taking the train? Train. It's going to cost you to buy some new tickets. <coughs> Let me get the prices. I'm just going to load up my separate PDF so I don't have to keep looking for this. All 
Alright. If you want a four day ticket for district travel, it is five gil. If you just want a one way ticket, it's two gil. Five gil it is. I take it everyone's going to be buying a full day ticket? Yeah. Alright then, five gil each. Take about 20 minutes to get to the station. And then you go lickety split through the wall, and then to there, which will take you about five minutes. And then you can walk from the station to the house, which is taking over 20 minutes. Bringing you into nine. Uh, you also walked from this place to there, which should only be like another 20. Alright, there we go. You all arrive at the house. I assume it's supposed to be AM. Yes. I mean, it's a 24 hour clock, so I can just take away the AM PM. That simplifies things, yes. At least to me. It simplifies it to me because I use 24 hour clock anyway. Alright. As you head back through the districts, you'll see how different they are from one another as you get further and further from the middle. The districts become more destitute and has a stark contrast in what type of citizen is walking about, along with definitely a lack of police presence. As you walk from the train station, you get to the house in question as you find an unkept house which you could assume hasn't been touched for a good week or two, with dirt and dust on the front door and windows. The building is mostly made of a dark brown wood with lighter coloured frames, and two windows are peering into the house itself. Hopefully you all love the mysterious music. Very mysterious. Do you want to try and knock on the door? Sure. Knock, knock, knock. Knocking on the door will return no reply, with the door swaying a bit from the pressure. Squeak it open. Be dramatic about it. Am I not at full health for some reason? Possibly. Did you recover from sleeping? Uh, probably not. I don't even remember what my maximum health is supposed to be right now. I'll assume you'll open the door as it creaks. <laughs> and it opens up. And as you open the door, as well as looking through the windows, you notice that the building shows some sign of a struggle with chairs knocked over, as well as pieces of wood laying across the floor. <coughs> as, you as you open the front door, it will lead you into what you assume to just be an interim room, as right in front of you are stairs leading up to the first floor, with a doorway to your left and right leading into the adjoining rooms. The floor continues the dark brown wood design with a light brown painted wood walls. Try to listen and see if we can hear anything inside. Perception. Oh, damn. Of course. Well, you... Wait, said it. <laughs> All you can hear from here is the whistling of wind, breathing of your companions, and slight creaking of wood. Shh. 
Quit breathing so loud. I can't hear anything else. Fenrir closes his mouth. Nah. <laughs> After you, Koopa. As you take your first step into this interim room, the floorboards creak under your weight. Uh, lights? Anybody? Well, Remila has an iron torch, which you should be able to see the light off. Yeah, but I can't see very far. I'm That's because there's, there's, it's cause there's doors. There's the stairs lead up, okay. and then there's a door right here and a door right here. If you want, Koopa, <laughs> I can cast tor Torchlight on one of your equipment items. Oh, uh, not yet. Don't really like drawing attention to myself, if possible. Um, I'll check the doors, see if they're locked. Both doors do have keyholes. And if you turn the handles, they are both unlocked. Okay. Um, I guess I should check for traps, shouldn't I? Yep. Uh, this left this door, ordinary house would have all right the door. traps. You hey. find all of the traps that are zero. Okay. <laughs> every single trap. On Open the doors. Yeah. You, you find every single trap. There are zero. If you open the western room, it leads into a <coughs> sorry, uh, it leads into a small living room with a sofa missing some of its outside leather and a bookshelf with only a few shelves containing reading material. And as you're peering inside, you can roll me a perception. Can I do it as well since I'm in the doorway, kind of? Yes. Joseph doesn't see it, because apparently there's shade in his eyes. However, Osa, uh, you can make out a sparkling object underneath the rug. Hey, what's that? What's what? Something underneath the rug. What rug? The, oh! That, the that rug, rug in the middle of the room. <laughs> that one. Yeah, there's something underneath it. There's something under the rug, you say? I don't uh, see it. As Osa points out the glinting material to you, you will be able to spot it easier. Oh, oh. I'm uh, uh, bent down and check it out. As you go down to the rug, the rug comes alive and kills you. Um, instead uh -huh. of doing that, you'll instead find underneath the rug a depleted mana crystal. Its hollow white light barely shines at all. I mean, would I know what a mana crystal is? Yeah, it's very common knowledge. <laughs> okay. Mana crystal. Um, anyone I am can a barbarian. Well, you, you come from the Eva tree, which has oh, mana okay, crystals. Okay, yeah, true, true. Uh, but if anyone wants to know more about mana crystals or mana in general, uh, you can roll knowledge arcana or knowledge geography would also work. And it's a DC 10, so everyone can roll. Whichever one you'd think you'd have higher of. Exactly the same. Uh, which word? Knowledge Arcana or... Knowledge Arcana or Knowledge ge Geography or Dungeoneering. Since they come from the <laughs> Earth. They're all the same. <laughs> I mean, Arcana's the best suited, really. All oh, mine are plus two. Okay, uh, Alessia would know the most with Joseph learning some more mining things about mana. Uh, basically, mana is the natural... Mana is a naturally forming liquid and crystal. It forms mostly underground near mana husks, uh, 
uh, mana husks are mostly very similar to beehives from what you could see like the honeycombs and basically they seep out mana in a liquid form and crystals are fined by mining into the earth itself mana crystals are mostly used for forming materia, whereas mana liquid is used as a electrical source, which is used to mostly power all of Nifel itself, as well as some outside areas and um, kingdom cities. You would pass by a mana mine as you are in District 3, and Nifel itself is built atop a very large interconnected mana mine system where they dig up the mana crystals and harvest the mana liquid. If you find a mana crystal like this, it's probably either been bought as something goes like as an heirloom or pricey artifact, or is the remnant of a destroyed piece of materia. This one in particular has been drained of all of its magical powers. And it's, it's mostly just now a crystal. However, these can be worth something since they are not really a common item someone would have. So if you want to find out how much this would be worth, you could roll appraisal. Can I try to look at the, while they're doing that, look at the floor and try to maybe use survival to see how long it's just been there? You can do so, yes. Uh, Joseph, you can tell this mana crystal is probably worth around Ooh. 50 gil. And also, it's been there for some time. There's just dust everywhere. Checking the same thing. As far as you could tell, this mana crystal has been here for uh, at least a week or two. Is there a trap bar under the rug, Kupo? I peek underneath the rug. Besides the depleted mana crystal, there is nothing really of note underneath. Joseph moves his hand over it, disturbing some of the dust, but doesn't find anything hidden. Is that a cabinet in the top corner? Or is it just a... That's the bookshelf. Yeah. Any books left in it? Or is it just destroyed? There are, so, there are some pieces of reading material, yes. Anything of no perception error? There's not really anything there that's too interesting. It's just normal reading material. Some fiction, some factual... Check the kitchen next. Sounds good to me, come on. And I open the door. Uh, the eastern doorway leads into yet another small room, though it's pretty much the same size as the uh, living room. And you can see it is an open plan kitchen and dining room, with the kitchen being at the northern part of the room. The table is missing some corners, along with one of the chairs being smashed to pieces. And the table has on it two plates of food, though they are mouldy and attracting flies. If anyone has a craft or profession to do with cooking, you can roll those to identify the food. I roll survival to see how old the food is. Yes, you can also roll survival, but craft slash profession be easier to check. But you can roll uh, survival as well. That's better. All right, checking of the food. I'll assume you're not trying to taste it. Um, nope. You'll see you assume. that. <laughs> yeah, I'll assume. I mean, is that what you're doing? Probably you, you not. Assume... 
could always just lick some of the mold, see how long the mold's been there. Just, just sniff it. All right. As you sniff the food and generally identify it, you will notice that the food was made four or five weeks ago. Light. This isn't Death Note. <laughs> isn't the window giving you light? Uh, some. <laughs> you guys gotta remember, I am only Hume. I mean, the window does give light, it's just hard to give directional lights from outside into a room. Would you like to search the room for anything else? Yeah. Feel free to roll perception. <laughs> That's bad. Free tens. I have the power. <laughs> but that just luck. That's just free tens. I like, I like how Remilla also wasted his reroll to get worse. <laughs> However, Fenrir just searches around the room and finds everything you guys are failing to find. Uh, he is able to dig up some ingredients that are left over that are still good to go. As you find smelling salts and squid ink. Uh, somebody else should hold the other smelling salts. I've already got one. Um, what does Squid Ink do? Do we know? Uh, Squid Ink inflicts oh. blind for 24 rounds. Oh, that's good against somebody that I'm melee up with. You better see throwing ink in their eyes like a squid. Exactly. Just take a bag and just like, like a, what do you call? Like a water skin and just squeeze it right in their face. <laughs> And you should already have smelling salt. It basically just removes sleep. Yeah. Uh, upstairs, then? Yeah, I think upstairs. Uh, the squid ink is. Does it have a range on it, or is it just. No, it's, it, it's thrown, so it uses the normal thrown rules. Oh, maybe uh, Remy should take that then. Like, like, most of these items are contacts, so you need to throw it at an enemy. Or melee touch. Maybe. You, you, you throw it at an enemy. Yeah, okay. But they're not really designed for touch. Oh, gotcha. Just dump the bag on his head. Yeah, sure, I'll take that as well. Or her. Still, yeah, he's he's got the best throwing out of the group that I've seen. I've never, I've never seen Alessia try to throw anything, so. <laughs> right, you heading upstairs? For all I know, yeah. all Moogles are good at throwing things. Alright. Oh. Don't move, please. Wait, did you just... Okay. Something like went off screen. I don't know what it was. All right, uh, you should all be in a tight corridor. Uh, heading up the stairs, you will hear them creak under your weight. You've put Fenrir uh, as... in the wall. No, he's not. I can't move him. There you go. No, no I can't move him because he's under the Evosa. Um As you reach the top, both on your east and west sides, there are doors. However, the western door is slightly ajar. And you can all roll perception. Remila, as you are coming up the stairs and trying to ignore the creaking of the wood, you 
can hear some distinct breathing from the eastern room. Now, quickly tap on the shoulder of Arsa and tell, tell her this someone or something you breathing. Like you Chinese whisper it up the, yeah. the order. Playing telephone. That's good because I was gonna look in the slightly ajar door first. Well, if Osa tells Alessia, Alessia will be like, "There's breathing in the western door." There's breeding in the western door. What people breeding? Yeah, I don't know if I want to watch that. And Alessia will kind of just like be like, "Yeah, I'm only checking in the eastern door." <laughs> uh, check at that door specifically. Um. Uh, is that a, a separate check or what? What are you checking? The eastern door. What are you checking about it? Uh, is there a well? For, first of all, is there a keyhole in it? Yes, both these doors have keyholes. Uh, very, very quietly and gently try to uh, check if the eastern door is unlocked. It's unlocked. It is unlocked. Yes. Uh, I will try to listen very hard at that door and see if I can hear anything specifically behind that door. Actually, no, sorry. The eastern door doesn't have a keyhole, so the eastern door cannot be locked. Oh, okay. If you listen to it, you don't really make out any noise. Okay. I, I just look back and I'm just like shrugging my shoulders and I don't know. I'll kind of just like whisper to the party, just be like, do you want Fenrir to go in first, Kupo? Also, Joseph can't really see much, but um, there should be some light you can see in this room because the door is slightly ajar. Yeah, I can see a little bit. Yeah, I can't see nothing. It's because you're in a corridor. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, do you want Fenrir to go first, Koopa? And it's this side over here that has the, the yes, breathing the, sound? The, the, yes. the eastern side has breathing. The western seems safe. I will step back up against that so that somebody else could go ahead of me. Me and myself and Fenrir go up to the door and just be like, is everyone ready, Koopa? Uh, let me check this room behind me real fast before I, before we put our back to a room that way we have no idea what's in it. Uh, open the door the rest of the way and make that trick. Uh, what check are you doing on the western room, sorry? Perception 16. Yeah, to, to do what? Uh, look around and, and listen and open the door a little bit, just to... You, you don't listen to anything about it? What's that? You don't hear anything from this room, but you can okay. open it up. Okay. Seems clear, but I don't know if I'm the best one to be listening for things right now. Apparently I'm not very attentive. You don't know. Well, once he's opened that door, can like Fenrir like do like a reception check to like listen in? <laughs> yes, and, you can listen into well. the open room. Well, I, I'm basing that on the fact that you know somebody, three or four people behind me can hear breathing in the room right next to me, and I'm just like, I don't know. You, you can hear Joseph complaining he has earwax. But that's about it. <laughs> well, we can't hear anything, Kupo. <laughs> All right, I'll close this door quietly as I can behind us and then just press myself against it until then we're... Why are you not investigating the room? You can just walk in, you know. What? Just, yeah, we can. We can investigate just the room. We just yeah, go let's go to the west, western room first. Oh, okay. Like You're already, already in the doorway. You might as well just go in the room. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess stay in the corridor and keep an eye on the eastern door if you're worried about it. No, I mean, I can have Fenrir stay in the doorway, actually. Just give me a sec while I try to swap them places. There we go. As you enter into the west room, it will lead you into a single bedroom with a adjoining bathroom. The bedroom seems mostly untouched, though it does contain a chest by the foot of the bed. I'll, Light. I'll like speak to Fenrir telepathically, be just like, let me know if anything, if you hear anything, Kupo. You, you know what, Alessia? Do you, 
I, I'm sure I've got a, a coin or something in my pocket that you can cast light on. I can just put it back in my pocket whenever I'm not using it. Would you mind, please? Of course, Kubo. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> just give me one second. Okay, I'll pull out a, a gill or something like that. and There you go, Kupo. You, you can just drag an iron torch onto yourself. Uh... uh. If you go to Pets and Mounts as the iron torch, just drag that onto the map. You can make a copy uh... of it. And then you should be able to move it around. Anyone should be able to. Oh, okay, cool. And is there a way to... Like, bind it to my character for now? Just highlight no, the could... character. You, you, you either move yourself and that, or you make a ring selection, which I don't know if you can do without a mouse. Uh, I well, you can, actually you can bought hold... a mouse. No, either that, you can no I'm talking about him touchpad. specifically, because he has a touchpad. <laughs> yeah, He's I, had I went trouble out. with doing the touchpad thing before. Uh, I, I went out and bought. Alright, then just hold the... Ah. There you go. You, you got it. Does that thing actually... I, like... uh, I don't think the Iron Torch is cast light for Alessia. I don't think you've linked up to my character. They show light for everyone. It's not... I don't think it's showing light for me. Have you got dark vision? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Then light. it doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you can see it's anyway. Well, I like chests. I'm going to check out this chest. The chest checks you out as well. It asks for your number. <laughs> well, I don't How actually own a phone at this at this juncture. However, <laughs> <laughs> there's this nice little Moogle, and you know, mail service type thing that's uh, that's going on. Anywho, uh, uh, is the chest locked? The chest is not locked. I will look inside the chest. You open up the chest, and inside is a masterwork fire staff. Ooh. <laughs> I just went and bought one. Yeah, what yeah, size is it? This yeah, one's medium size. size. Okay, that's fine then. Um, I'm not so annoyed. I, I, I recognize this because, you know, Alessia has one, but... I don't know how to use it, and it looks too big for Alessia. It is, Koopo. Can anybody... How, how, do, how does it work? How do we use it? You, you need to have, have a cast level device. and MP. You would not be able to use it. No one else oh. here would be able to use it. But you can eh. sell it. You could also, you know, let me take a fee, and then I could sell it. <laughs> or I, then I could use it. Not sure why a thief would want to use... I, I'm, I'm just kidding. I don't really want. One. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if it came down to it, I could work it so I could make it, so I could use it. Um. Okay. Well, while Joseph's uh, doing that, Alessia will kind of just look over what appears to be like a bookshelf or dresser. Like that's a dresser. If, see if there's well, anything it, it, of interest. Um, uh, All right. See if there's anything just... of interest. Clothes. Any fancy oh, so clothes? would you like to put this in your no. special little bag? Yeah, uh, sure no, thing, Koopo. I'll hold on to it, walk over to Fenrir and give it to Fenrir. <laughs> uh, your there name you go, is not Osa? Well, I don't think it fits in my bag of holding. Oh. Too long. Most weapons don't. Okay. I suppose we can give it to Fenrir then, for now. Fenrir can carry literally anything. Uh, it is two feet by four feet. So yeah, you'd be able to put the staff in there. Yeah, never mind then. And I guess I'll check out this dresser and under the bed and whatnot over here. How much does it weigh? Let me get you... That um, I assume it would just be the same weapons. as my staff. So well, your staff is, your staff is light, so yours is no, it's yours small. is small. Fair point. It's not super important. I'm nowhere near the. Uh, power staff weighs four pounds. Yeah, easy. Small one would be two pounds. <laughs> uh, 
there's nothing of importance in the arm where all the dresses. Okay. What about the bathroom? Inside the bathroom, which might be of interest to you, since somebody bought some soap, is a bath. <laughs> but he doesn't like water. I'd be very worried if it has water. It doesn't. It doesn't have water in it, no. Um, if I there, there's a bath, a toilet, and a sink. If I wanted to hide the torch, what would I do? You put it in your pocket. Well, yeah, but like in terms of game you mechanics just and remove and the token. Point. Yeah, you, you click the token and you press delete. Or backspace, I think works. Too. Ah, okay. Hey, Koopa, is it okay if I go and use the toilet quickly? <laughs> Th this scary building is giving you uh, some bowel problems. The abandoned toilet that does okay. Sure, go for it. I guess. It's okay, I won't flush. <laughs> Just you just leave it in there. You, you <laughs> sure, I don't see better, or... but okay. You go number one. That's the sink. You're going in the sink. <laughs> what? Oh, no, that is the toilet. Sorry. I was going to say, hold up. Yeah, yeah that is the toilet. Sorry. I was thinking about the other room because they're reversed. <laughs> you forgot to close the door. Well, I would have closed the door. I mean... Or I'm just a very open person. I don't know. It's your character. Thank you, Koopo. Wait, I didn't wash my hands. There's no water. <laughs> oh, there's water? Well, Is there weird. running water in this section of town? <laughs> Thank you, Koopo. Yes. I mean, in this derelict house that's been empty for... Lord knows how long. At so, least four to five weeks. At they least paid, four to five weeks. They, they paid their water bill for a few months. Shall we check out this room now, Kapo? Okay. Sure. Yeah. You check out the door. It doesn't look too too sexy, though. So if I have a nice look at the door, is it going to be a push or pull? Because I'm not having this sort of shit again. <laughs> it is a push door. Okay. Because you can also see that this door is a push door. I'll have Fenrir push the door. Unless there's a door handle, then I'll let see. It's a door handle, yes. Then let's see you all. Do open the door. Inside is a baby, apparently. It? Oh. And it goes Baba. Fuck this shit, I'm up. Oh, baby. Alright. You open up the door, and it leads into yet another bedroom with an adjoining bathroom. The bed is thrown onto its side and is leant against the far wall, and the dresser is slashed in two with plenty of debris on the floor, and a crying baby still. Within the far end of the room is a haunched over humanoid who is seemingly crying. Kind of just like walking slowly. Uh, uh, hello, Kupo? <coughs> What's the matter, Kupo? <coughs> Hmm. Um, if you can see the creature fully, which I think you can, uh, you can roll Knowledge Arcana. Nope, okay. And as you get to there, you'd be rolling Arcana while everyone stops moving. You have no idea what creature this is. Hey, Kupo, it's okay. I'm here to help you. It's not okay for you, though. As you move towards the creature, it will seemingly activate as it stops being haunched and stands tall at a very high height as it towers over most of you. And it turns around as you can see its body a bit clearer. And its body is mostly very pale, gout, and very, very thin as you can mostly see just muscle on bone beneath its white pale skin and you can notice several coloured dots all around its body and anyone else can roll Knowledge Arcana to identify the dots within its body. Anyone or just trained? Uh, anyone. Anyone can roll Knowledge Arcana. Untrained or not. I assume I can't do another one. You can do another one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the face. Oh man. 
Go on, Fenrir. Alright, um, everyone besides Alessia will identify the glowing dots as materia. And it is very strange and possibly dangerous as the materia is inside the creature. Normally you cannot place materia inside your body unless you're a Magicite Knight. Hey, Rimbaf, me... what was that yeah. about transformation, Koopa? Let me try this dispelling up, Koopa. Uh, don't know how much I feel about that right now, Koopa. Get your fat ass out of the way, Koopa. Let me try to save this guy. Yo, you are just rude. We're gonna have words after this, mister. Ooh, baby. Oh, baby, I love the way. Uh, I'll have Fenrir five foot down to here. And just kind of like... Full defense? Yeah, I'll just full defense. Same and what about Fenrir? Here. Okay, both, you both fall defensing. Both, both fall defensing. Alright. As you both fall defense, you'll go to the creature who... Let's see... Will attack Fenrir. Hey, Koopa. We were only trying to help. And your AC will be 20 since you're full defense. However, both of these will attack. Or, well, will hit, rather. Um, oh, nope, there's a third one as well. Alright, all three of these will hit. And... They'll all roll the same damage. Fenrir will take 24 damage. From a bite, a claw, and a slam. Hey, Kubo. As it just goes insane and just lets out a flurry of attacks at Fenrir as Fenrir tries to dodge or absorb the damage though it's stealing quite a bit of it to your avatar. No, there's only two health. Oh, sir. I'll hold my turn after Remy. Alright. Here we are. I will... Can I pull out the orb whilst I'm walking through everybody? I'll allow you to. I'll throw it. I'm assuming I'll just throw it at him, don't I? Yeah, it's a ranged attack. Yeah. I'll throw it at him. And that will hit, so roll to spell. I will re-roll that. Eek. Gotta say. Fuck! Hey. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm gonna use a hero point to re roll this. It's gonna be even worse. Alright. Yeah, oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an amazing use of a hero point right there. Uh... Alright, so after re rolling all those times. Um, <laughs> Oh, that was just bad at, at luck least you still get the best of. No, you don't. No, he doesn't. Oh, okay. That's not good. The roll re rolls, not roll and then decide. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sad times. So the yeah. s the stone hits the very small chest of the creature, almost hitting one of the inladen materials. However, you see the magic spark out of the stone as the monster starts to kind of vibrate and roar as the spell tries to get rid of any effects on it. However, the creature only seems to be emboldened by this attempt, and it fails. I tried, Koopa. Now can I kill a Koopa? I don't think you'll have time, Koopa. <laughs> Arthur, after you. Well, I was gonna charge, but I can't. I should have said sorry. I can throw without being hit, so... I mean, sure. I'm just gonna walk up to it because I can charge. Uh... I mean, if it hits AC 20, sure, whatever. I'm just gonna rage. <laughs> Alright. It, it's gonna hit me. There's no question about that. It hurts. Kupo. That it does. Yeah, well... 
gonna hurt either way. And a single attack. Even with axe, my attacks are here. Oh. Is that all correct? I mean, it should be. Alright, that will yeah. be a miss. Joseph. Can I get... To, can I fit in this space right here? No, there's a there's a dresser in the way. Okay. I will... Oops, well, actually, that, that's not even a dresser. That's the bed. You definitely can't go there. Is it? Yeah. Okay. If you move there, right. then just hold your attack for when Fenrir you can fight for step down. Indeed, Koopa. Yeah, I'll just... Uh, yeah, I'll just move there and then uh, hold action to attack when I have advantage with uh, flanking. You mean ready and attack? Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, Words let's see. hard. One second, Koopa. I'm just seeing if what's better, the Cure Wand or my spell. No, definitely the spell. Uh, so, I will cast Moogle Charm defensively. Beautiful. Now succeed. Not so beautiful. But Fenrir will heal five. <laughs> heal for five. How is that better than the cure stat, cure one? Because the cure one was only one d six. That was a three d four, so I had a higher chance. Really? That was oh god. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was one d four. What you got? Yeah. Do you have any bonuses to that? Yeah, you don't add your bonuses. Damn. Rip. That's nasty for a full round action as well. Oh yeah. Well, it heals everyone. But it does heal everyone in the 15 foot centered from me. Uh, and right. after Fenrir at foot, 5 foots, he will. Joseph will get his attack first. Not fight. <laughs> Joseph, do you attack? That's <laughs> okay. a miss. Wait, that, that will. No, yeah, that will be a miss. Alive. Unlucky. Now Fenrir will yep. fight. You should probably also note that there's a plus one rapier. Oh, is uh, yeah, I'll do that. Just have the name, see rapier <clears throat> plus one. That should hit, and also trip, so which is quite nice. The bite will hit. Oh, come on. Just to make sure I did. This is not. I'm just double checking, make sure I did it right. There you go. It's in there now. That might have hit an 18. Yeah, but that's not what this is for. That was just to make sure it went through. And at 28 will be a trip. Now, does that actually provoke, or was that one of my feet? That was a feet. God damn it. I couldn't remember or not. Pretty sure that's Fury's Fall you're talking about. I can't remember what it was. And that'll be you done, unless you got anything else up your sleeve for Swifts. Sadly not. Alright, you'll go back to the creature who is going to attack Fenrir from the ground. God damn it. The first one missed. The second one will hit for 10, which is going to be sending Fenrir back to his plane. Bye bye, Fenrir. Just note that he's at minus three in his other plane. Um, and then he'll use his other attack on Osa. And that'll hit Osa for 11. Wait. He'll then go to Remila. Um, can I try acrobatics to there? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, so bad. Uh, yeah, whatever. 
I'll reroll it. <laughs> Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> every time today, every time. Them rerolls are doing well for you, yeah? Well, as you go to there, you will provoke, which this creature will attack. Probably kill me. Um, however, that will be a miss, because he has a minus four to his attacks. Yeah. And then I will attack him with my shot sword. Yeah. So a plus two to that flanking, but yeah. Uh, that little crit damage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, leave it alone. Wait, well, it is on. a crit and uh, it does confirm. I've only just realized Fenrir doesn't actually go back to his plane until he's reduced to less than his uh, constitution score. So he's actually oh, still so he, there. So he goes to his plane when he actually just full on dies. When he actually dies, yeah. So he is okay. there. Just unconscious. So, for every that would have to be one up. Yep, so. Uh, there would be no flanking in there, so. Nothing for the. Did you already put flanking into your attack? Nope. Okay. Alright, and that'll be your damage. Unless you have anything else to throw out? Nope. Okay. Um. Remilar, as you attack, you'll notice your short sword does nothing. Damn. Have fun, Koopa. Oh, sir. I'll just full on accept the frenzy. That's happening. Alright. Uh, yep. And then I will attack this thing. Damn. Okay. The first one will hit since he has my minus to his AC from being prone. Uh, the frenzy will hit, and the bite will also hit. However, the bite does nothing. You are unable to pierce its weirdly white and thin skin. Joseph. I am going to faint. Okay, give me um, one uh, memento. He has minus four to his AC right now. Yes. That's He's... fine. I get extra damage if I faint and I get I get to go against his uh his uh uh freaking flat footed armor. He is painted. Uh, you also need to update that macro. That's a move action for you now. Ah, oh, right. That's why then. That's why I'm thinking, why are you Because he has yeah. a proof faint. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think I hit, though. Da, 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 da. That would still be a mess with all those penalties. It is against flat footed though, just so you know. Yep. I'm doing a flat foot. I, that's why I said all the penalties. But that'll be a miss. And then it will go to uh, Alessia. This is uh, for Fenrir. Fenrir, Fenrir Ivan needs to roll Constitution or you're healing him. Nope, you can roll. Right, Fenru is stabilized. <laughs> I like how it's two targets. <laughs> Alright, as you do that, um, you need to roll oh. spell resistance. Oh god, what is spell resistance? It is d20 plus your cast level, so three. That overcomes it, and you hit him for nine. What? Is it electricity? Electricity. It is lightning. lightning All right. Uh, that will hit him for nine. And as far as you can tell, it affects him. Nice. All right. 
We'll then go back to the creature who is going to continue attacking back at Ulsa since Remela can't do anything to him. Uh, due to lowered AC, this, this is all going to hit. Yep. Oh, not 74. Oh boy. Uh, you take 28. I'm unconscious. Alright, and then we'll go to Remula. Uh, Don't know what I can actually do here. Oh, oh my god, I'm so dumb. Yep. I have luck points I can do multiple things with. I forget to do them things with. I mean, you already used it, so you didn't have your swift action anyway. Uh, one of them's immediate. That's a swift action. All oh, right. Immediate and swift use both the same swift. It's just immediate can be done outside of your turn. Not really sure why. I, what I should do? There's nothing I can do here. Uh, I'll just. Can I five foot step there? Yeah. All right, and then move action to pull out a potion and drop it on. Well, make also drink it. Well, the foreground. <laughs> yes, you can do that. Uh, yep, I'll do that then. Ten healing. Um, also, we'll spring back into life. He'll then go to Osa. Well, I'm kind of useless. You can still attack it. Uh, sure. <laughs> Just two people on the floor attacking each other. I mean, yeah, I guess I don't want to stand up. Not good, correct. There you go. Come on, ankle biter. Just bite his ankles. He'll be uh, biting his head. I mean, my bite did nothing, but then again, I was raging, so I don't, probably don't care. I'm just gonna try to attack him. And it's like minus four. I don't have very high hopes because I'm also exhausted. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> minus one. <laughs> I just wanted to bite Damn. You, you bite yourself with that kind of roll. Uh, none of those are attacking him, obviously. What a surprise. Joseph. Okay, let's do this again. Oop, that's, he's not fainted. He is definitely not fainted. And... That will hit and seemingly do very little damage. Alicia. Uh, uh, well, full round action to check a book. Roll of spell resistance. So weird, these having spell resistance. Like, it's just a chocobo kicking it. It's, it's really weird. It's a magical chocobo kicking it. <laughs> I like how this is saved to full prone. He's already prone. <laughs> and you overcome it and damage him. You just land the chocobo on his head. <laughs> Nice. And then we'll go back to him, who is going to retaliate against uh, Osa. <laughs> and hit <laughs> Osa for 11. This is a really funny battle. They're just two things hitting each other on the floor. <laughs> I'm unconscious. And then, uh, I'm going to do it this time. 
And then the monster is going to stand up, which will provoke from Joseph. Attack Joseph. Yes. Ooh. There we go. And that will hit and do nothing. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Remila. See, the only attacking thing I can do to it will hurt everybody else around him. No, thank you. So it's like, exactly. <laughs> you should have invested in some more Wands of Cure or something. And just buff up your EMD. I can't afford to do that. <laughs> right. I'll just buy a load of potions. Potions that really would help here. Um, and I've, I was looking at the... the Alchemical items of this. There are like anything decent. Well, anything with a fourteen um, save is like a thousand. I have that for one. So, the the magic damage seems to be getting through, but weapon damage doesn't. That's correct, Kabel. Usually, how it works. So, so magic my, overcomes my... DR. Yep. I've got a magic weapon. <laughs> that doesn't mean that isn't magic, though. I know. I will throw this squid ink at it to see if it hurt, works. Yeah, make it flat-footed. Now nah, failed. Never mind. <laughs> um, you just that? just throw that at the wall, at the window. The window's blocking out more light now. And that'll be you done because it's moved to pick out and then send it to throw. Yep. Oh, sir, roll constitution. You bleed out for a point. Joseph. Uh, well, let's try again. I'll let you decide. Oh my god, seriously? Never mind, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, I'm not going to calculate it because that misses. Alessia. It's like uh, uh, just going to use the power stuff. Yonk. That will hit and incinerate its flesh. And as if lighting a fuse, the creature starts to roar in agony from the magic and physical damage it has taken. The cuts and bruises on its body starts to open wider and grow darker as the creature starts to vibrate suddenly as it explodes. Oh no. And Let me think guess. I think you're all in range. Um unless you're kinda of just like hide behind Joseph. Not on my Jos clothes. Not on my Joseph, clothes. you need to make a reflex save, whereas the other two can't reflex. Ouch. What? They're unconscious, they can't move. Ah, oh, so me and Alicia, you, right, you, you, you and Lessie are fine. It's just people right. five foot around him. And I probably don't even make it. Alright, uh, you will fail, Joseph, and you take 11. Fuck, no. Oh, sir, you take 8. I'm not dead. And Fenrir will dead. take 17. Yeah, he's definitely below his constitution score. And as this explosion happens, the building starts to rumble, and you can hear the creaking of wood and the smashing of rock, as if an earthquake is happening just this second I, as this guy's exploding. I, um, I reach into my bag and I grab a potion and I shove it down Osa's throat. <laughs> after after opening it, okay. Just opening her roll, throat. Roll, roll for healing. <laughs> you, you put uh, the vial down her open throat. Yeah, open. <laughs> uh, so let's. It's uh, where's my items? Uh, brain. Why not work? I'll do the we... same. Like, can we? I'm going to have to do the same, which is probably very low. You, you would be able to use a beep one yeah, at a time. Like, Only one of you could be able to do this. Do what? Like one potion. The, the, the potion. Can I cure her at the same time with the cure wand? Yeah, uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, 
Overloaded with healing. Joseph, what are you trying to do? That should be uh, enough. I'm conscious. Alright, so Joseph pours down a vial of potion into Osa's closed throat um, as Alessia heals her with the wand. And also, as you regain consciousness, you feel the building starting to fall into the ground itself. As a hole uh, opens up beneath the house and you go crumbling into the earth itself. Everyone needs to roll acrobatics. Or you can accept it if you want. Is this falling? Yes. Would Moodle's flight help at all? You cannot fly in this situation. <laughs> Apparently your, your flying is helping you because you're the only one who passed. <laughs> okay, so... As the house crumbles into the earth, you all fall along with the house itself, hitting the walls, seat, and the floor repeatedly. Whereas Remular is able to jump himself to a nearby piece of furniture and hold himself steady, he still hits rather harshly against the building as it's falling down. Um, Remular, you take 5 damage, whereas everyone else takes 10 did As... Remy actually pull up potion down? No. Also. Okay. There wasn't enough. Okay, so 10 damage? Yes. You also had an iron torch, so I throw that on you as well. As the house crashes into the earth itself, it travels for a very good distance. And while Osa won't be able to calculate it because she's back unconscious again, uh, the rest of you just immediately can... hits her head and it's again unconscious. <laughs> yeah, um, the rest of you can possibly guess you've fallen a good two hundred or three hundred feet into the earth below. However, thankfully, the house softens a major hit of that blow, as that fall would have killed pretty much the average person on falling, just, just hitting the floor and becoming a pancake. The house crashes and creaks and explodes open with you guys barely surviving the fall. Though the house has seen pretty much... The rest of its life has been a better day than this day, as a lot of it has been crumbled and destroyed along the floor and walls. And you see yourself with the iron torch lighting up the area inside of a manor cave. As far as you can tell, it might be a man of mine, as the walls are very square and cut into a path down the way. As Alessia just brings out her wand and starts hitting people over and over again with it. That should make you all feel better, Koopo. Uh, what? Better. What Not happened? Good. Oh, so you got 11 healing, if that helps you at all. We took a long fall, Kupo. Yeah, I mean, I got it, but I'm still in pain. I'm tired. Where are we? What? I don't know, Kupo. It looks there like some a creature, type of... then the building fell. I was Explosions weird. happened, sinkhole happened, fall happened. Hurt happened. As you look around, you will notice the remains of the mana monster, though it is pretty much all destroyed from the explosion that happened when it was killed, as well as the crash landing of the building, also damaging what remains of it. And... You're currently in a very small area of this mana mine as the building snugly fits into an almost square out outcutting as such. And towards the east, there is a path leading off far distance 
and just below that, towards the north, is a stream of mana. And as you notice this, everybody needs to roll fortitude. Hell, re-roll. Much better. Finally, it works. Okay, as you are picking yourselves up and investigating the area, you're able to resist the effects of matter as the area is full of plenty of mist and vapors from the stream. Did, and did the bed survive? <laughs> the, bed, the bed did not survive, no. Oh, so it's just a pile of feathers and cloth now. Yes. I mean, the bed wasn't alive in the beginning. <laughs> the beginning. Like, he was in pieces when he got into the room. Uh, that's true. And uh, since you all uh, saved, you'll also know that matter can be especially dangerous if not handled properly. And since you're not wearing any appro appropriate protective gear, this matter will affect you adversely the longer you stay here. Well, we definitely need to get out of here. Both Did the manners. Yeah, she healed a bit. So how does that still Yeah, she took work. 10 damage from the fall. I was at minus 8. Thank you. <laughs> Both the mana stream and mana crystals in the wall give almost the entirety of this place dim lighting. Uh... Unfortunately, it seems the only way out of here right now. Wait, what the it's heck? Forward. It's deeper into the cave. Well, this will be fun. You, you actually have uh, to leave and not come back, Jack. Sadly, yes. So you might have to switch the streaming over to fish if you want to finish the whole session. We can stop early and go later next week. Sounds good. Fine by me. Wait. Sure. Uh... <laughs> it's as good as place and I need to end it. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, then we will stop here for today and continue.